Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at how the Radeon 680M performs in games. These graphics can be found as part of Ryzen 6000 series processors, which themselves can be bought as part of modern gaming laptops or systems like this. This is the Tiny B-Link GTR 6, which features a Ryzen 9 6900HX. 32 gigs of RAM and a 500 gig SSD, along with the aforementioned RDNA 2 based iGPU. B-Link were kind enough to send me this system, but rest assured I won't let that influence my thoughts, and I wasn't paid any money for this review, aside from receiving the unit itself. You can buy one of these 8 core 16 thread mini PCs either as a bare bones machine, adding your own memory and storage as and when you please. Or you can buy the 500 gig version equipped with 32 gigs of 4800 MHz DDR5. Either way, you're still getting the fantastic and fast 6900HX along with its surprisingly capable onboard graphics. It's certainly nothing special to look at and I like it this way to be honest. We've got USB 3 and USB-C along with a clear CMOS button and headphone jack at the front to start. This very bold GTR logo around the side just in case you forgot which model you bought and around the back well we've got more USB ports, 4 HDMI ports for quad 8K 60Hz support, LAN and DC power in. The fuzzy and inviting texture on the top is accompanied by a fingerprint unlock sensor. Removing the panel at the bottom of the unit and the first thing we see is this fan which is positioned to draw in cool air, though having said that I'm not sure how effective it is given that it's covered when the system is fully assembled. What I will say though is that this unit stayed within very reasonable temperatures throughout my testing over the last few days. Taking this out and we can get a good look at the DDR5 memory which is upgradable to 64 gigs, as well as the Kingston KC3000 NVMe M2 SSD. This thing boots into Windows 11 ridiculously fast. On the other side of the board we have the cooling unit for the processor. This fan draws air in through the mesh cover at the top, which by the way is interchangeable. The first thing I did was boot into the BIOS which is pretty extensive and I made a couple of changes to the out of the box configuration in order to try and maximise performance. It's nice to see that the BIOS is not only fully accessible but customizable as well. I altered the system configuration from the default 35 to 45 watts to make the most out of this hardware and I then assigned more memory to the integrated graphics which by default was set to 3 gigs. I chose 8 and this seemed to make a little bit of a difference to the performance in terms of eliminating some stutter when gaming. The system was a tiny bit noisier but the difference between idle and load wasn't that significant. The Ryzen 9 6900HX is a very solid mobile chip and editing this video in 1440p resolution posed no problem. It destroys once popular desktop favourites like the i7-7700K and Ryzen 1700X, both of which I still feel are fantastic desktop chips by the way. But let's move on to the games. Because it's RDNA 2 based, the 680M performs better than the Radeon graphics found inside other APUs we've tested on the channel. That said, it is still important to remember that we are technically working with no discrete graphics card today. CSGO at 1080p with the lowest settings or competitive settings, I guess you could call them, runs at over 170 FPS with solid lows. These percentile lows are actually a lot better than I thought they would be and in my opinion this is a very playable experience. You could cap this at 144 FPS if you were using a high refresh rate display for an even smoother experience if you wanted to. I'm playing online in a dust to death match and in usual fashion I'm getting absolutely destroyed. I might as well not even have my keyboard or mouse plugged in, that's how terrible I am. Warzone 2 is set to 1080p natively but FSR 1 has been enabled and the quality preset has been utilised. This should have launched with FSR 2 at least in my opinion but with the quality setting it still looks half decent. What's even more decent is the performance. Using normal textures, SMAA, T2X and low for everything else we were able to get at least 60fps. 
The game doesn't look brilliant for sure, but it is definitely playable and considering once again that we are using nothing but built-in processor graphics, this is really impressive. I can only imagine performance like this back in the day when I used to use an AMD A4 3300 APU. I don't really know why I continue to target 60 FPS in single player titles like Spider-Man here because a locked 30 or 40 would have been much more consistent and realistic, but I think I got carried away a bit with trying to go for that upper figure. Marvel Spider-Man Remastered did hit at least 60 FPS on occasion, but averaged out at just below this number with FSR enabled and the very low preset selected. I'd definitely suggest a locked frame rate for these more demanding games. The Steam Deck has a 40 FPS option, which is a nice middle ground, so that might be worth considering with hardware like this. In all honesty though, I'm really surprised by this result even though we have had to make some serious visual sacrifices. Luckily, FSR 2.1 means that the game still looks pretty crisp overall, especially thanks to the built-in sharpness slider. God of War was one of the more challenging games today for our 680M, though as you can see, it is pushing our clock speeds to the 2400MHz limit, making full use of the iGPU. Temperatures are still pretty stable, and the unit isn't too noisy under this heavy load. Once again we've got FSR to thank for this performance, as it really helps out here, and turns a somewhat unplayable game into a playable one, even during these intense boss battles. Cyberpunk 2077 has recently seen the addition of FSR 2.1 in an update, and this is... Well, it's a literal game changer. Enabling this and setting it to balanced mode with, say, 80% sharpening will mean that the game still looks almost as good as native 1080p while performing a lot better. I could have definitely made better use of the settings, especially if I wanted to target just 30 FPS, which is admittedly a more sensible choice, but somehow we almost averaged 60 FPS with this configuration. We were just one frame away, though there were certainly moments when the game exceeded this by quite a lot. As you can see, power-wise, we're hitting 45 watts, and we're also exceeding 3 gigs of VRAM. Though I can't help but wonder if this wouldn't have been the case anyway, even if I didn't set the new limits in the BIOS. Worth doing anyway, to be sure, I think. Finally, let's talk about Red Dead Redemption 2 quite a lot, because I spent the day downloading this game on my not-so-brilliant internet, and during this time, I was certain that the game wasn't even going to run well anyway. I don't know why, but I decided to go with the Ultra Textures, as well as medium TAA, but despite this, the frame rate was still pretty good. I didn't try and hit 60 FPS here, probably because I'm so used to playing it at 30 on consoles, but this still does feel great as it's hitting just over 40 FPS. Even with all the other settings set to their lowest, the game looks really good when the ultra textures are enabled and a bit of anti-aliasing is thrown into the mix. It's like a surefire way of getting solid performance without too much of a visual sacrifice, providing you have the VRAM available to opt for higher quality textures, of course. Overall, RDNA 2 technology is a game changer for integrated graphics, and the Radeon 680M iGPU found inside the B-Link GTR 6 is a very good performer. I'll leave a link to the unit itself on the official B-Link website if you want to check it out, of course. I think we found a new addition to the gaming without a graphics card video lineup. Thank you very much for watching this one then. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.